Today on Survival Preparedness for Beginners, we're going to be talking about the top 10 prepper mistakes that you all out there have to avoid to try to keep yourself out of some bad situations. Prepping isn't really pointless unless you're doing it wrong. Number one, not knowing how to adapt to a lot of the changing conditions that are gonna be happening during a natural disaster or a SHTF situation or any of these things. Could be even a major weather event. Yeah. Number two, not knowing how to use your tools. Your toolkits, your power tools, you know, I mean, people can go out, you can buy saws, you can buy um, hammers and nails and you can buy staple guns and you can have all the fancy equipment and everything else. But if you don't know how to use that kind of stuff, it's useless. Number three, basically, if you prep for things that are in your area to get you going, to get you on the road to being prepped, as in like hurricanes, bad storms, B, if you prep for the things that you know are going to happen, and likely they will happen, folks, floods and everything else, if you are prepped and ready for all those type of things, more than likely, you're going to be able to survive just about anything else that's going to come down the road and get us. Because Number four, more than likely, there's probably a lot of people out there that are not storing your water properly. You have to make sure that you can store your water properly. If you don't know how to do that, then you want to make sure that you're doing your homework and figuring out how to store your water properly because you don't want to store the water and then come to find out when you need it it's no good. Number five, improperly storing your food. Food storage is a huge thing. Thanks. So you really have to pay attention to when you're storing your food, how you store your food, where you store your food, and everything else. You need to have the proper information so that you will have food. It won't be bad. Nobody's going to get sick or die because they're eating bad contaminated food. This way here, it ensures that you and your family will survive any type of situation. Number six, you gotta have a preparedness plan and be able to put it in place. I've talked about that several times on this channel about having a plan written into a notebook, into a journal, into something, and have a plan written out. You know, where is the safe point? Who do you notify that you're going to the safe and point? Number All seven is not practicing your preparedness plan. So number eight, which is a big one, don't store all your supplies in one location. If all your supplies is in one location and you have to leave, all right, you're only going to be able to take so much supplies unless you've got a huge trailer or whatever else that you can pull behind your vehicle or whatever. If something does majorly happen, you're screwed because if you can't take a lot of those products, now you have to pick and choose what you want to take with you with the availability of the size of your vehicle. Right? Number nine, don't go showing off all your supplies. The right. less people know, the better off you are in a survival SHTF type situation. So remember that. All right. The last one on this list is believing you can survive on your own. Now, we all have this belief that, you know, if something happened, you know, we can all survive on our own. We'll just go live in the woods and I'll be set and I ain't got to worry about anything. More than likely for most people, that is not a justifiable scenario you want to put yourself into. Having a community or having a group is going to be so much better for you and your family in a SHTF type situation, emergency, natural disaster, or anything else. The more people you can pull together, the more things can get done, people can survive, and there is fear in numbers, if you get what I'm saying. So believing that you can survive on your own is not really a good scenario you want to put yourself into. So you want to make sure that you have other people, whether it be where you live now or where your safe haven is that you're going to go to so that you have other people around you to help protect the whole group and protect you, your family, their families, their kids, and everything else. Just remember this, folks, all right? 
You might be the crazy one with the tinfoil hat on right now, all right? But one day, mark my words, one day your friends and family members will be knocking on your door when a disaster happens and they don't know what to do and, and you and will they, be thankful that you were the one who dared to have a disaster preparedness plan in place and that you were prepared and ready 